Yo, what's going on guys? And today I'm doing my 7.0 mock NBA draft. I think I'm doing two more of these and I want to hear your opinions right now. What do you guys think of it? I have made some changes since the other day and yes, I think it'll be really, really good. I just got some text. My girlfriend's blowing me up and yeah, hopefully you guys don't hear the lawnmower outside. But yeah, this is going to be the mock draft I have. Let me hear your thoughts down below of it. I'll go through the second round once we get to it. But let's get through the first round. As usual, I've kept the six picks, the first six picks, pretty brief because I've talked about them now. going to be my seventh time. So hit that like and subscribe button. Cade Cunningham, come on. He hasn't worked out for any other team besides the Pistons. The Rockets, they want Jalen Green to create that backcourt of Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green, which is going to be explosive. I got Jalen Suggs going to the Toronto Raptors. They could go for Scotty Barnes, but Kyle Lowry's leaving. Replace him with Jalen Suggs, who Jalen Suggs is an all-star. Like, I think Kay Cunningham, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, Jalen Suggs all have all NBA potential. And so, so does Scotty Barnes. I think Kaminga could have all NBA, but he's more closer all-star potential, but I agree with somewhere I read Kaminga floor to ceiling is his floor is Jeff Green. His ceiling is a more powerful athlete version of Jalen Brown and his middle is like Harrison Barnes. So that's where you're going with Kaminga. Scotty Barnes, they're trying to say he's like a more athletic and he's going to be like a better version of Jay, Draymond Green. James Booknight, he's flown up the draft boards and I, I've seen everywhere they're saying James Booknight is going to go to Golden State. Also, I want to say the reason why Cleveland takes Evan Mobley, replace Jared Allen, who might get signed by the Raptors. Raptors are actually heavily linked to Jared Allen. James Booknight, he's a guard. He can also play wings. He's got long arms. He can hit the three ball at 40%. He's going to be great. He's perfect for the Warriors. Moses Moody, Orlando needs shooting and defense. This guy gives them both. 6'7 with a 7 foot 1 wingspan. Yeah, he was inefficient this year, but he took a lot of like tough shots for Arkansas as their number one guy. Franz Wagner hasn't really talked about who he's worked out with. We know, I think he's worked out with Golden State, but I think he's just perfect. Imagine Ty, him next to Tyrese, De'Aaron Fox. If they keep Buddy Heald, Harrison Barnes, I think Franz Wagner could be the future with Hal Burton Fox. So I like that. Memphis moved up. If you guys did not know, they traded the 51st pick, I believe it was, and the 17th pick, and Jonas Valanciunas for Eric Bledsoe, Steven Adams, and the 10th pick and the 40th pick, I believe it was, something like that. They're going to buy out Eric Bledsoe, so, and they're heavily linked to Josh Giddy. They want him, I guess he's going to be their star. I guess he'd be behind Kyle Anderson for a year and then be their starting point forward. Hopefully, they believe he can develop into sort of like a Joe Ingles. I have heard like Sam Vecini, and I agree with this. He doesn't want to compare him to Joe Ingles, but there are some Joe Ingles-esque things that Josh Giddy does do. Jalen Johnson, like this team, but uh, they need shooting guard help, and they could go because behind Terry Rozier and Lamel Ball, there's no guard help. They have four technically four forwards or wings in the Martin Twins, Miles Bridges, and Gordon Hayward. Then they got P.J. Washington, Nick Richards, and Vernon Carey. You could argue, but I've seen Kai Jones falling. Everybody, like, I know someone's going to comment down below, this is impossible. Kai, they're going to draft the center. This is redundant. There's actually, you could probably, I don't think there's many centers in this draft that can be day one starters. There's a lot of centers in this draft that can be day one backups and provide good minutes. So the Hornets would benefit from trying to get someone like Montrez Harold or an actual starting center and drafting another group of second round centers to compete against Nick Richards and Vernon Carey as the backup center behind their starting center. And Jalen Johnson had the biggest hands. He could be a point forward, help LaMelo run the system. I just think and if he figures out his three-point shot, he's going to be a really good defender, ball handler, passer, and shooter. Corey Casper, they've worked him out. The Spurs need shooting. Yeah, they need a big man, but come on. San Antonio is not going to miss up this type of shooter. This just screams a San Antonio pick. They would want Jalen Johnson. 
but it or Josh Giddy, but if he isn't there, Corey Kespert or Alperin Sagun, but I'm going with Corey Kesper. Just because Greg Popovich is like I just got my my landlord just texting me. And yeah, so I think Corey Kesper, they're not gonna mess that up. Davion Mitchell, I think is they've said they're gonna trade the pick if they don't believe someone's NBA ready, 15 points a game on 45% from three, defensive player of the year, best defensive player in the in college basketball, one of the best two-way players in basketball. Yeah, he's six foot, but he's good. Chris Duarte, he's been so heavily connected there. He's going to go at 14. He was invited to the draft to watch in the green room. Trey Murphy the third. Some people say he's not quick enough or athletic enough to play the two, but he played the two in college. He's a three right now. If he bulks up, he could play the four. But he's perfect. We put him next to Denny Abdia. And because right now their future, like shooting, because if they Trey Murphy's a shooting guard, he's at shooting guard. Denny Abdia is at small forward as a kind of like a Lamar Odom, Hedo, Turkaloop mix. And then you got Roy Kishimara, power forward center. Daniel Gaffer and Thomas Bryant switching off with Alex Lynn or Robin Lopez if you bring either one of them back. Then at point guard, if you trade Russell Westbrook, you can start Bradley Beal. But if you trade both of them, that's going to be a hole. But if you keep Russ Westbrook, you got it right there and you got to sign somebody. Al Prince Agnew has been compared to having a Kevin Love body. They, they keep saying they're like he has a very reminiscent body to Kevin Love and that they would, you know, ideally like to see him for his first few years work on positioning himself on defense, become a better rim protector. He's going to be a guy who gets you hella rebounds and is a phenomenal inside scorer. But they hope that with NBA conditioning, he can develop his body into a similar body. Kevin loving his prime when he was in his prime years in Cleveland and become a stretch four. Isaiah Jackson, not Isaiah Jackson, who I originally had at 18. I have him now going to New York and OKC going with Usman Garuba. Garuba hasn't worked out with any teams. I think he just doesn't want to. And he's the best defender, interior defender in this class. So they get the best interior offensive player in the draft. And they get the best interior defender in the draft. Because they literally have no centers. And they just, it works out perfectly. I think this just screams Sam Presti by doing this. The Pelicans get Jaden Springer. And I have them getting Jaden Springer because he's just a good defender. I don't, there's really no good shooters. They could reach for someone, but I just don't think it'd be worth it. Jaden Springer would be the best player they could get at that moment. You know, then I have the Knicks getting Isaiah Jackson, who's this. I had them getting Garuba first, but then I was like, Garuba's probably going to go before. Isaiah Jackson is perfect for what our man Tibbs loves. And yes, I know if Garuba was there, okay, it would be, in my opinion, an easy pick for Garuba because Garuba reminds me of Taj Gibson. And I think Tom Thibodeau would love that, but Isaiah Jackson would be great behind our man I'm blanking out Mitchell Robinson then Kai Jones people are gonna hate me he's gonna he's not gonna fall this far I think he might and if he falls this far Atlanta's just gonna snatch him up to replace their boy John Collins and you got Miles McBride I got him going to New York he was all defensive big 12 and a 40 percent three-point shooter he screams a perfect fit for the Knicks Lakers they get this tenacious defender 6'3 or almost 6'4 6'3.75 the 6'4 wingspan, 40% shooter, almost 17 points a game, won the national championship, day one starter. Zaire Williams, he had a tough year, really tough year, inconsistent, had some flashes. Really, the Rockets draft here, just hoping that he can live up to that high school potential. Keon Johnson, he keeps falling. Everyone says his stock is down just because he's a terrible shooter and not a shot creator, even though he has ridiculous athleticism. He's more of a defender. Rockets will take that project. Kessler Edwards. He's a 6A. He can play the two, but I wouldn't play him there. Sort of in the line of Trey Murphy's two, three, and four. Three-year player at Pepperdine. Pepperdine's where PCA Academy is. You know, Pacific Coast Academy. Zoe 101, guys. Joshua Primo. I've seen a lot of people put either Dusamo or Primo. Who They're going to get a, a guard. I think Primo because he's 18 on our contract four years. You go sign somebody, bring back Barton in two years. Primo's your new starter. Jeremiah Robinson Earl. We saw the success of Blake Griffin for them. Don't bring back Blake. Bring back Jeremiah Robinson Earl, who can start and produce as well as Blake or even better. Bones Highland. They need another facilitator behind our man, Ben Simmons. Or if they trade Ben Simmons, Bones is awesome. 19 points, 40% from three. Come on. Phoenix Suns. 
you know, they reached for uh, Cameron Johnson. Turned out to be a great pick. Jalen Sticks, Smith, Stick Smith, last year, you know, was supposed to be a pick in the 20s. He went 10. We didn't really play him, but he's a stretch forward. Nemus Kieta is going to be their next reach pick. He, I think he should be a first-round pick. Some people think he's second. Most people think he's second. I got him going Nemus Kieta. Because Sharif Cooper, come on, I don't believe, yeah, he's a 20-point scorer, but he can't play defense or shoot. And he doesn't have NBA size or athleticism. So tell me how that's, you know. Then Quinn Grimes to Utah Jazz. They need perimeter defense. So I go right there. JT Thor to replace Bobby Portis or Brooke Lopez in the future. Have him just work in the back. All right, so I had like a text or something. Mm. Nico Ayo de Sumo. Yeah, you 39% under 100 attempts this year. But he's got defensive ability, length, poise, and vision athleticism that screams a New York Knicks pick. Herb Jones, I really think the Magic are going to keep this pick, maybe get rid of their other ones, but he averaged like a little under 10 points, a little under 7 rebounds. He had past two years over a block a game, and for his whole college career, over one and a half steals, almost two steals this year. Shreve Cooper, Oklahoma City needs another ball handler. He's right there. They take him. Yeah, his shooting and defense are both terrible right now. He's extremely small and unlikely to ever be a good defender, but if he reaches his ceiling, it's because his shootings get better, and OKC can do that. Joe Weiskamp. He's just going to be a Wies camp. Someone tell me how to say that correctly right there. No one has yet told me, so I don't know. And yeah, so I do want to, that's my landlord who just texted me. I'm moving into a new place on Saturday, an apartment. I'm in a house right now. I lived in a house for the past year. Kids, if you're in college, do not live in a house. It's extremely expensive. And I mean, I lived in a house before. I took a two-year sabbatical and I lived in a townhome which was actually a lot more reasonable as newer this is an old house this is like from 1920 or some shit it's like a hundred year old house i mean and it's awful i hate it i'm moving to an apartment on saturday sunday so setup will be a little different you'll see now brandon boston we're hoping that john capillary just made him look like shit and they can make him actually be the player he's supposed to be detroit takes one of the most natural scores in the draft in cam thomas he just kind of sucks at defense. Trey Mann, Chicago needs a point guard. Trey Mann, 6'5", 19 points, 40% po from three, and he's a decent defender. Sacramento needs a big man. <coughs> this guy could become a starter down the road if everything goes right. Scores inside, rebounds well, kind of has a jumper, and yeah, he cut, plays drop coverage, but he's a good, rip, a decent rim protector in drop coverage. Isaiah Todd might choose the Terrence Davis route and go undrafted and compete in summer league. But if he doesn't, Memphis takes him right here to be another guy. San Antonio needs some big man help. Take Santi Aldama, 21 points, 10.1 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 1.7 blocks with about two threes made a game, one steal game on 51%. Like the only other players to average those numbers are Tim Duncan, David West, Andrew Bogut, Jason Thompson, Lamine Diane, and Santi Aldama. So he's a beast. His potential stretch for big man. I love him. Son of a professional basketball player and an Olympian, and the son of or nephew of a professional basketball player. Then you got the big man stash with Philippe Prechusev. He's gonna be like a Euro League MVP and never come over. Josh Christopher. He shows some defensive ability with one and a half steals and willingness to shoot. It's just that like a lot of lapses, not high basketball IQ, and coached by a lot on his athleticism. Joe Ayaya, a little hard to gauge. Looks like he could be a decent defender, has some ball handling skills, some passing skills. Nothing he just seems like he's decent all around, but not elite at anything. So then Jason Preston, he's been the score for ohio the past two years seven rebounds seven assists a game with decent efficiency you know johan or john someone tell me how to say this french guy's name i think he's a good stats project for here toronto would love this type of player isaiah lovers another great toronto player he'd be a power forward you get 40 percent from three greg brown he's a guy who's going to take a few years but he could be the next jeremy grant right here he's probably one of the most athletic players the most athletic forward in the draft Aaron Henry, another great athletic. Yeah, he rests as a shooter, but probably one of the most athletic and better defenders in this year's draft, who hopefully you believe you can fix his shooting. Dayron Sharp, I'm not a fan of his. He probably has one of the best motors. 
he, and passers as the big man position. And he looks like he could be a good backup who's a high rebounding, high energy, that stuff. Then Vrenz, he looks like a guy who could be a stretch three or four and ha has the length to be an all right defender, kind of be a poor man's Franz Wagner. David Johnson's supposedly been getting hyped. Like people are like really feeling David Johnson. They're saying like he's good. His three point shots looking good. So he's a good backup for New Orleans. Raekwon Gray, come on, Indiana needs some small ball help. So small ball five behind Miles Turner, stretch four behind Demonte Sabonis. OKC goes another, you know, guy right here, Deshaun Nix. Not a bad guy. He had a terrible fucking year, and hopefully he can show that he needs some time in the G League for two or three years, and then it'll work out. Matthew Hurd, another guy like Vrenz, but not as athletic. He's got a great three-point shot, got the length to be a decent defender, but he just needs to add to his frame and develop his athleticism to actually make it in the NBA. Jericho Sims is just going to be a lob threat for LaMelo. Moses Wright's going to be a lob threat for New York. And Luke Garza, Brooklyn, I'm not high on him, but he's super strong. He could be a day one backup, so Brooklyn takes him with Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Indiana needs a guard. Austin Reeves can play. I'm trying to see. Oh, David Duke right here. David Duke, I missed. He's freaking awesome. He's he, his percentages are. Don't look at his percentages. Look at every other stat. And then let's see if there's anybody else I skipped. I think I skipped like a few guys. Let's see. There's one guy I just thought of, and I realize that I am not. There's one guy that I took off this list that I completely forgot about. And I can't think of his name right now. There's someone missing. Someone missing. I'm like, who is it? I just saw Dacian Nix. And I was like, oh, I'm thinking about somebody. I can't remember. I'm missing somebody. Tell me I'm, who I'm missing. Well, that's my NBA draft, guys. Let me hear your thoughts down below. Till next time, guys. Put peace out. Like and subscribe to support the channel.